Hello, everyone. It's Hi. time for the live coding. Hey, Salma, how's life? Good, thank you. How is your life, Stefan? Well, we're wrapping up the day here in Berlin, and I'm excited to do some, to continue my live coding career with you here. Such an expert in the field, you know? Well, you know, um, it has been said, but you know, you're, you're, the, you're the up and coming. You're going to overtake me. Rising star, rising star, huh? Absolutely. <laughs> All right. So uh, to <laughs> kick things off, like every time uh, in a contentful live stream, let's uh, do some housekeeping. Let's um, let me press a button here. This one, bam. So what we're going to do today is that we will um, discover or tackle a little bit of a rich text rendering with contentful and React. And before we dive right into that, um, let's just do the housekeeping stuff. So as always with contentful stuff. Um, uh, our live events and in-person events uh, underlie our code of contact so that everybody feels safe and welcome. And then if you want to learn more about uh, what Contentful and the community is up to, you can always go to contentful.com slash developers. And if you want to interact with myself, Salma, or Shai, who is on vacation, um, let's see if he will pop out, uh, pop up here later. Um, you can always join contentful.com slash Slack. And we're doing a little bit GraphQL today, so I assume um, that we cover a good, good amount of ground here today. But if you want to learn GraphQL and Contentful, you can always go to ctfl.io, which is short for Contentful, slash learn GraphQL. And I think this is the housekeeping that we're going to do, so we can get rid of that one. And from there, we're just uh, going to take it. What do you think, Salma? Let's go. What are we going to build today? I'm excited to do. This is our first proper live stream together as well, isn't it? Is it? I think it I th is. I think it is. And well, it I feel like the first one. I think it is. I, I once decided not to join spontaneously when, when you were streaming on Contentful, but then, yeah, no, that doesn't count. I was in, in our software, though. <laughs> it doesn't count. <laughs> yeah. So this is, this is a momentous day for everybody. Um, because we get to do something that I've learned a lot about in the last few weeks um, and I've written some blog posts about as well. So you can, um, for any of you who are watching already, you can add this to your reading list and um, that kind of summarizes everything that we're going to talk about today um, about rich text in React. And we're going to show you a live demo about everything. I think that sounds good. Want to want to tell me what rich text is, Salma? <clears throat> rich should we show text. It? Should we set it up? What should Let's we do? set it up. Oh, 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 oh. So many options. Um, rich text is similar. So using a rich text field in Contentful is very similar to using a WYSIWYG editor, which stands for what you see is what you get. Hi, Irish Beats and hi, Toe Frog. So it, unlike your traditional WYSIWYG editors that are generally very opinionated and they give you back HTML, which you don't generally want to deal with opinionated Why HTML. Not? Because oh, <laughs> you can't do what you want with it, can you? It's like, oh, I don't want to spam there. I don't want that there. I just want to do what I want with my pure data. And that's what the rich text field gives you back on the Contentful API, pure JSON with the added ability uh, to link entries and other assets from Contentful inside your rich text field that are also returned as JSON that you can get all the data that you need from. And it's just, it's it's fantastic, really. Um, as you know, as a front end developer in my career of front end development, using general CMSs out there, I don't care about HTML. I care about the data and I care about what I do with that data. Um, and that's where the power of the rich text field comes in. Did Can I do well? Did I did I sell it well? I think I think you I think you did very very well. <laughs> so should we should we set one up? Let's set one up. So I I just uh, grabbed the random contentful space, started a test. Great. <laughs> and what we what, what we're going to do is we're going to add a rich text field and then we will um uh, play around with that. So let's just call it very creatively rich text. text. Add that one. And then we should have that already available for a blog post. So when we now go to this blog post little thingy here, what? 
Uh, well, that is interesting. Yeah. Have we discovered a new feature? <laughs> let's let's press OK. <laughs> <laughs> let's carry on. <laughs> OK, what we see here is our rich text field. And um, I think the best thing is that, yeah, should we show what we're going to build first? Or should we dive into it? What do you think? Let, let's make that a surprise, because it's a fun surprise. Let's talk about the rich text field. Cool. So yeah, what you can do is you can just go in here, right? And you can do all the normal things from headings, lists, and all these kind of things. Uh, but the power comes into play, and that is what we're going to use today, is that you can link certain entries or assets right inside of the rich text field. So what you can do is, for example, hello world, Salma and Stefan on stream. We can now do something like an inline, inline entry. We can link something else. And then we have that in our beautiful JSON structure uh, moving forward. And for today, what we thought uh, we're going to do is we just start fresh with uh, a create React app with <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Hi, Luz. We, <laughs> hey, Luz. We will make the, the, the text very, very rich today. <laughs> and um, we're going to do that with Create React App. Sounds good? Yes, yeah, sounds, sounds wonderful. I think we're going to make some good progress today. And I, do right. you know what? I think I, I think I want to use what we're going to build today in my blog, my blog somehow. So this could be fun. Oh, yeah, you can. Yeah, I think you should maybe you can bring it into the starter or something. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. So what we have here is already a plain and fresh um, Create React app. And when you do start, you see this is currently the app. And as a first step, we should probably connect the Contentful API. How do I do that? So if you're using the GraphQL API, you can simply just use fetch with your um, space ID and your content delivery API access token. So you need okay, two so M variables. I think we can hard code them. Well, we can hard code those because they are read only keys. So you don't need to worry about exposing them. And plus we're in a test space anyway, aren't we? Let's set up a space ID. And I'm still getting used to this new fancy keyboard that I have. So let's see how that goes. So For reference, talking. Stefan has the same keyboard that I do after my recommendation, after Stefan failed with the Moonlander experience. Yeah, I cannot recommend the Moonlander, but I sold it actually. And the person that has it now is very happy with it. Amazing. Yep. So I'm going to create, no, I'm going to go to the API sections. And what we have here is a space ID and content delivery X token. So let's bring these in. That is great. And <laughs> the, <laughs> the access token. So how would I use Fetch in a React application? I haven't written React code for probably a year or two, I just discovered that. OK, yeah. Do you know what? I haven't written React for a long time either, apart from inside Next. So I think what you would do is you would do just create a function outside of the app component uh, that's called like Fetch Data, I would say. And in there, you can just, um, oh, that, that's going to be async because we're going to be awaiting fetch. I think our live share is messing with my pretty ID. Oh, that? yeah. Do you know what? I, it is actually. I can, I'm, uh, I'm going to exit and I'll, ex I'll open it if we need it. There you go. OK. And then you just, um, you could just which return. keyboard it is. We got the question. What key, which oh, yeah. keyboard is it? That's, you have it on your user page. Right? <laughs> I do, yeah. <laughs> It is not on my users page yet. If you click it on is. um click on hardware at the top. Oh, there you go. That's the one. It's this one. I have the Bluetooth version. Stefan does not have the Bluetooth version. No, I'm old school. I have cable. But it is very nice and it has some super nice lightings. Um, so I'm very, very happy with it. Luce went into my Twitch chat and grabbed the command. <laughs> The uh, excellent mod <laughs> that Luce is. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, right. So we could um, do a little const response equals await fetch. And then we get the GraphQL 
API link. Oh, shall we have, have you got the um, GraphQL playground installed on that contentful um, space? We will find out. We do not. Should we get it? We can get it. So what's the GraphQL playground? The GraphQL playground is a lovely user interface to uh, be able to explore the schema of your space using introspection queries, which is how GraphQL queries your data in your space to understand how it can provide you docs so you can have insights into the data available to you and really helps you construct your queries really nicely without having to guess. It's wonderful. Power of GraphQL. Yeah. And introspection query is your new favorite word. Huh? Oh, it is. It's my new favorite thing to talk about because it's just like, I I love knowing how things work like that. Because obviously you just take it for granted when you open up the GraphQL playground that GraphQL knows what stuff you've got in your space. And it's fascinating. So sh I'm going to find the video for anyone. I'm going to find the video that Shai made um, that tells you all about it. I should really add this to my bookmarks because I keep telling everybody about this. Introspection so queries, GraphQL, Contentful. I wonder if I can find it like that. There we go. It's amazing. I'll post this in the chat. Right, there we go. Cool. So, so what I just did is that I inst installed GraphQL Playground, and here we already see the endpoint that we can use. There you go. So rather than having to remember it, just install the app, and you've got it. And that's what <laughs> install we're gonna, an that's... app to get a URL. This is <laughs> and that's what we're going to fetch. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just see if that, if that works properly here before we... Copy and paste it. Great. All right, so we can do this one here. Um, paste hey, it into Exegete. Fetch. How are you doing? There we go. And you might as well hard code it in the URL because that's our space ID. Oh, yeah, good call. Yeah. Space ID. Three. And then we have. Um, body do you want to do a, Do you want to do with? You can do um, yeah. Body equals then response dot JSON, and then we can just console log it out. But we probably have to send some stuff, shouldn't we? Oh, we need a query, don't we? Yes. And we we need the access token too. <laughs> yes, we do. There That's just in the that, that. So, second second parameter of fetch is an object that will have um, a property of headers in it. Did you write it that many times that you remember? Yeah. It now? Yep. And this will be authorization with a Z. And I think it's bearer. I think. I think it's bearer. And then access token. You need to do the back ticks. Yeah, there you go. And then the next thing will be query. The next property will be query. And what I normally do is do query like that. Um, and I just normally define my query elsewhere so it doesn't get so big. But I guess that's up to you. We, we also have to make a post. Don't we? Or do you use a uh, get usually? I usually use get. I think. Interesting. I think. Let me just check. I'd love it if I had actually did remember this. Let me see. Um, um, I repeat, I got the keyboard from Amazon and it was actually shipped from the UK. And that's funny because I got my keyboard from the US. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Amazon? No. Yeah, it was Amazon, yeah. Uh, oh, sorry, it is a post, method post. I did get the bearer thing right. And you just got to just post so no, it. No, oh, and nobody the, remembers CV stuff. No. And the body is sent through. You have to send body, query, query. Mm. Body, query. Yeah. We have to stringify that too, don't we? Yes, we do. JSON.stringify query. There you go. And then query like that, I guess. Yes, huh? yes, yes, yes. Lovely. Sweet. Should we should we see if we we have to define a query first? Yes, we do. So we can go to the GraphQL playground and copy we could get the query that we want and then copy and paste it. 
All right. So how do we get rich text? Let's see. Let's let's find that one out. Mm. This is rich text. Okay. So oh, that yes, doesn't work need... because it's JSON. There we go. How many? JSON. And we are going to need links, aren't we? All right. So we have a lot of null values here. So let's let's see what's did going you, on. Did you did you save? I probably did not. So let's change that one here. Let's go back, try that one again. Here we go. Lovely. Is that the JSON you were talking about? This is the pure, unadulterated the, JSON I was talking about. Or as Luz would say, the, the, the rich text. The rich, very rich and <laughs> bountiful text. So let, let's, <laughs> let's go through this and see what we have, right? So if you go back to the rich text field in the Contentful web app and have a look what we did. So you added some text which is some normal paragraph text and, and we'll see that in a minute. And then we have something that we'll, we'll find in our response, which is called a link and it will have a link type. So if you go, so we've got hello world Salma and Stefan on stream and then something, it's a link to itself. So you, we've got here the first bit of content in the content node, we've got no type paragraph and hello world Salma and Stefan on stream. So we're, we're, instead of returning Paragraph tags, it's returning you a type. You can do whatever you want with it. If you are feeling extra fancy, you might actually not want to display your paragraphs in a paragraph tag. And that's how you know what it's meant for. But you can go crazy if you want and just do silly things and, and just turn it on its head. So you don't have to, you're not restricted to that kind of HTML. The next node we have is an embedded entry in line. So there are three types of um, links you can have in rich text, embedded entry, embedded entry block, embedded entry in line, and embedded asset, or just asset. It's got those three types. And so that tells you, that tells the, the front end developer who's working with this data what to basically do with it, whatever you wanna do. Now, what's interesting here is that <laughs> you would normally expect to see the rest of the data if you're in, from your embedded entry in line, or would you not? I don't know. But what the rich text response tells you here is that it's a link to something else. It's a reference to something else. And you want to be able to find that data somewhere else. Now, where do we scroll, find it? Well, that's a fun, fun question, <laughs> fun question, fun thing that you ask. Now we find that because now the, the way contentful <laughs> works. I'm very passionate about this. I know a lot about this. The way contentful <laughs> works is that it um so what's the reason for this? It's it's about giving you um it doesn't okay, so there's differences between REST and GraphQL. Now, if if you're using the REST API and you basically make this same request, you're gonna get a very similar response in the at the entry level because of a restful approach to architecting an API is that one endpoint that requests one entity should should actually give you back one entity in in itself. It doesn't give you those links um, as the raw REST response. And the same with GraphQL. Now, if you're using the JavaScript SDKs with the REST API, Irish beats on the edge of a seat. If you're using the Graph, <laughs> if you're using the JavaScript <laughs> SDKs. Um, they do all this fancy magic using a package called Contentful Resolve Response, which basically recursively goes and gets all the other entries that you need from the IDs that are returned in that top level response. Um, and it sorts it all out for you. Now, obviously, you are well within your rights to not use the SDK and do all this resolution for you. But because it can go so many levels deep and you can create so um such big and complex link architectures within your contentful data, you're gonna to wanna to use probably the SDK in JavaScript um, and, and all your other favorite languages to make that easy for you. Or with GraphQL, so before I say about where it's available in GraphQL, when you get the raw response from the REST API, there are two top level nodes that are returned in the, in the raw data. You've got um, entry and includes. Now includes is where all of your link data is kept. 
It's not returned as part of the entry because you're only requesting one entry. Um, but it's all it's alongside the entry is all the stuff that the entry references. Now, then when you when you use the REST API and you use the Contentful Resolve response stuff as part of the SDK, that's all linked for you. Now with GraphQL, it's the links are also returned alongside your main JSON of the rich text field. So what we need to do is query on after line five of the query is the links as well. And then you will see that if you make that query, you get another node under rich text. And we have to actually ask for what we want with these links. I think you can just do type name. Like that. Blog post. post. Yes. No, unknown fragment. Um oh God. gosh, I was we, we, we were going, we were doing so well. Um I think it's type name. Let me just check. Inside links, oh, you do links entries. Uh huh. Because you, with the power, the thing about GraphQL is that you, <laughs> I don't know what I've just bought, but it sounded great. Hey, Lucas. Um, the thing about GraphQL and what I really like about it is that it, you get what you ask for. And so we know that we have inline entries inside um, our rich text field. So we're going to ask for entries and then something else. I think it's because I'm looking at a query here, I'm asking for entries block and then type name of the actual type. So and I think we need to do there is do entries in line, maybe ask for the sys ID for these as well, because we're going to probably need this when we render it out on the DOM. And then underneath sys, if you do um, under underneath outside of sys, you do type name with two underscores. And then next line you do dot 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 on blog post and get something from the blog post. So maybe the title. There we go. And introspection cruise has told us everything is good. There we go. Right. So here, so, go on. Let, let's sum, sum up here for a moment what happened because I'm I'm still some sometimes with GraphQL. What my God, what did we just write here? So we yeah, we. <laughs> Do you feel the same? I know, totally feel the same. <laughs> I'm just copying and pasting GraphQL forever and ever after my one query. queries from everywhere. Yeah. yeah. We should add the snippets. Yeah, no. Maybe next time. Okay. Uh, so we have a JSON coming back here, which we have here. And then we're going down links, entries. This is the type of the reference that we're dealing with. And then we are deciding for blog posts that we want to get the title. Yes. Cool. Yeah, yeah, I think that sounds reasonable. And if we had a block entry, can you just go and um, demonstrate that actually in the Contentful web app there? So if we add an, an asset and a block entry, we can show the, the differences between them and, and how we query those. Unsplash photos. There we go. Cool. So now and then so. Um, underneath inline, you would have block. And then do the same thing with the type name. They're not doing type name in there. I think, and then what did I just link? A blog post. On blog post, here we go. Now we should have it. This time as a block link. And it, you'll see that also returned in the JSON part that will tell you above that you have a block embedded entry block at the top in the JSON node as well of the response. And then we can have an asset, assets. It'll be underneath, oh. it'll be underneath entries because um, assets and entries are ah, different entities. Good call. Here we go. And they are blocks or hyperlinks. Cool. 
Here we go. ID, and then what else do we got? That's an image file, so we got all that stuff. And there we go. Nice. Nice. So that's in the links node, and the JSON node just references those that data. And that's going to become very, very important when we render that out on the front end. I think we got our first query, don't we? Yeah, that's our query, I think. We can probably get rid of the assets um, and the, from what we want to build, which no one knows what we're building yet, we can probably get rid of the assets and the block and the entry block because we won't need that just yet. But we can console log that out and see what we get. Cool. So let's bring that one in here. Irish Beats, did you just buy the keyboard or what does that mean? I think it was my um, it was my animated sales pitch about um, why <laughs> so, rich text is so good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So we, we have the query, we have the request. Should we just um, but but we probably need to use state and use fetch and use use effect and all that stuff, don't we? We probably do need a use effect um, to put the data into our state. Yes. Mm, like that. Yeah. Or we could pass. No, no, don't worry, because I, I, I'm so used to server-side rendering these days that it's uh, it's blowing my mind. Um, yeah, so on uh, use effect, we just um, make that cool. But the problem is with use effect, you can't do async inside directly. So you have to, um, you've got your fetch data function. I think you could, you have to create another function inside of it to call the async function. Could we do just a promise then maybe with Ben? Yeah. I think that might that might. I work. think this is a very crucial design flaw of use effect. I think it's yeah. very annoying. Something like that. It, it might. I'm. I'm. It might not work. <laughs> I'm not expecting it to work. <laughs> because uh, you'll have to await fetch data, and you can't await directly inside use effect. So I'm going to try and find a code example for you. Where did I write this? We're using the promise here, so it doesn't really matter if we are waiting or if we're eventing it. It uh, we'll comes see. down to the same thing. We'll see. That's not going to work, but we'll see. <laughs> so let's see. When we now go here. Hey, Swallow. Nice to see you. Um, we've got an object here with errors. Errors? <laughs> we, we're doing well. <laughs> oh. Oh, you didn't. Very Query does not include a query, neither in the body nor in the blah, blah. All right. Query. JSON string find query. So let's have a look at, at the at the request. Well, I do see it here. Mm. Four hundred bad request. Is the um, header correct? Is it the header? Let me just check. Yeah, it's not having the authorization header. Do you need to pass? Oh, in it is here. It is here. It is here. Oh, is there? Do you need to pass in content type application JSON as a header? I think we do. Yeah. Is it? Content also, authorization, authorization should be a capital A, um, and it's content dash type with a capital T and a capital C, because I do know that headers are very case sensitive a lot of the time. Right. That should work. We'll give it another try. There we go. Here we go. And you have data? Oh, it did work. Sweet. That's not too bad, is it? Lovely. All right. So should we return that? Return that, yes. What was it? Body dot mm -hmm. blog post collection dot item. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
All right. Oh, I see. I get it. And I think this bit's not going to work. We'll see. We'll see. Cool. So now we should have the second one already. So now we're here. Yeah, that's not going to work. Um, oh, why is that? Data. Oh. Body data. Mm -hmm. Okay. There we go. Nice. Here we got our three blog posts. Okay. So um, we are just going to work on one blog post, though, aren't we? And one rich text field to do that thing that we're going to build. Yeah. Should we just return the first one? Yeah. Hey, Matt. Or do we just want to query the one that we're actually working on by slug? Fancy pantsy. Let's do yeah, that. Yeah. Little filter. Um, how so would I do in, that? So in on line two, um, you can do limit one and then comma mm -hmm. where and then open an object slug colon or whatever you want to query on in, in string equals whatever you need. From Neat. there, hello world. And I'll get you that one. Nice. I take that one. All right. So updating the query. So that and then that looks good, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. So we have our data. Um. I'm not sure whether we need. Oh, we could. Yeah, let's let's set up a state variable for our rich text field um, using use state. Fancy fancy React, and then we go here. Yeah. Could be rich text or post or what should we put here? Let's call it post because we're getting getting more than just the rich text field, I guess. That post, yeah. No, good. And then um, set post is going to be dependency of our use effect because we're going to call set post as the data. I believe this is what we do. There we go. And then what we'll be able to do is just for fun, let's um, log out on the page post dot title or whatever we have in our uh, query. Do we have something in our query? No. Let's get the title. Oh, slug. Here we go. Let's do that. Post uh, title. There we go. So I think just yeah. refresh. Just refresh. We broke it. Broke it. Is it doing set post? Uh, 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 um. Yeah, I think it is, but I think we're running into the null value. Ah, uh, yes. There we go. You can just Where's do post the... and, I think. Yeah, there we go. Oh, no, you have to do um post yeah, and, and. Yeah, yeah. Hello, world. Does that work now, huh? That's the title. Schnitzel. Schnitzel. Look Looks good. We just connected so, React with Contentful. So the reason why, for anybody in chat, the reason why it wasn't working on the first render is because posts had not been set because um, the use effect runs after the things load and then everything gets hydrated. So it was trying to find dot .title of null. So uh, this is why it's really nice when you're doing uh, server-side rendered stuff because you don't have to worry about that stuff. And like, as if, if anyone knows, everyone knows I do a lot of Next.js and stuff, and so I'm just so used to that. So there we go. Right. I really need to take a very quick break um, because I, I will back in just one second. <laughs> <laughs> I 
course. <laughs> so what we what, what we have now is that we have the um, the posts already. We connect and we fetch the data here. And the next challenge will then probably be to render this whole beast of a JSON structure. And what we have in Contentful is we have a bunch of rich text tooling available. And um, we can quickly have a look uh, because I know that there is a rich text renderer available. So we can do rich text render contentful, and then we can find the package for that. And I think it is actually this one. So it is an NPM package that you can install and then use in your projects. And all you then have to do is to use document to React components. And it comes with a lot of pre-built stuff that you can then use in your applications. So what we're going to do is we're using Yarn in this project because Create React App is using Yarn. I will install this new dependency. And then we can, can see what's, what's happening. I just gave the pitch for rich text renderer. Yeah, because, you know, just. Contentful knows that some of these things sometimes take take long longer to get around when you're just starting out and trying to explore it. So Contentful provides you all these tools that you need, the SDKs, the rich text renderer. It's it's quite lovely, really. Cool. So all we have to do theoretically is pump it in and uh, use it. And see what we get out. Yes. Yeah. So um, this document to React components, what it's doing, it's taking a... The, the JSON from the rich text, the JSON document representation, and it's going to allow us to um, configure what we want to do and how we want to show our components and, and how we want to display everything. So I got a question in the, um, in the Contentful Community Slack just today, actually. And the question was, how can I style my rich text? And the answer is, if you use the rich text React renderer, you can style it however you want with styled components or with just plain CSS um, classes uh, with or CSS modules. You can do whatever you want as if you would be working with uh, normal HTML, which is which is great. So shall we do it? Let's do it. Mm. So we're using the method here and then. So I'm going to pass post. in post dot rich text dot json, and, and I think you should... had a capital T for text. We should probably clean things up. Something like post. Otherwise, we run into the same issue. Yeah. I don't think you can do ternaries like that. I think you have to do the post and. I think. We'll see. You might prove me wrong. Mm, where are we? Localhost 3000. You can. Oh, we got something. There we go. What do we so, see here? <laughs> what do a we string. see? We see a string. <laughs> we see a string. Why do we just see a string? So let's have a look. We do see a paragraph. Oh, I see why. I know why we see that. Yeah. Okay. Because we haven't configured it to um, to process our embedded inline entries with our options. Should we should we bring in some some easy options first, like bold italics or something? To, yeah. To let's off? do that. Let's kick that off. Bam! 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 So this is going to return you separate nodes that tell you what's underlined and what's bold. So it's going to split out your sentence into different things with the marks array. Yeah, nice. Looks good. Does it work on first try here? Let's see. <laughs> we should make that fancy, though, blinking and stars and stuff. <laughs> So with the document to React components, it's already got like um, some, uh, it ships with some basic functionality. But what you might want to do is when you're developing your front end is to add custom classes for the bold or add custom other things for the underline or the italic. I know I do that anyway. That here, huh? Mm, exactly. 
Cool. So should we give that a spin with... We need this buddy then, huh? Oh, we do, yes. So let's see. It's telling the next one. A bad one. Um, yarn add and full rich tags types. And then we can add that one here, and then we should be able to put that in. So again, another tool, rather than having to kind of decode this yourself, it um, basically these blocks and marks are just like string identifiers to tell you which type is which when it's when document to React components is moving through that tree. Ah, mm -hmm. oh, keep typing your own there. <laughs> so let's see, let's see your start. Our my new thing to... at the moment is to um, write npm run dev in a browser address bar rather than localhost 3000. That's that my does not work. <laughs> That's what I keep doing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so how, how should we set up the functions? I guess we should read some docs then, huh? Let's read some docs. So we have this buddy here. So we can pass in um, into document to React components a second parameter, um, which is an, an object um, of options, which document React to React components, when it looks at your, your tree of data, it will merge it with your options and do all this fancy stuff to say, it's basically like a switch statement that tells, tells the, uh, the renderer what to do when it comes across a certain node type. All right, and we currently only have marks, bold, and I guess. Irish Pete is a fan of yarn commit. <laughs> <laughs> so should we just, um, okay, so we have some options here and we can pass these to document render some, something, something. Here we go. Yes, but you, uh, you don't have a bold component yet, do you? I don't. Should we just use a, use a span and do inline styles? Or yeah, should, let's should do, do that. Let's let's go wild with inline styles. Let's make oh, it well. font size font size stupid pixels and. <laughs> but what's stupid? And there we go. Yeah, I was going to say a hundred, but I thought that was too far. <laughs> We're not too far here. <laughs> Look at that! <laughs> Lovely. Fancy text effect. We're gonna go gonna go wild. <laughs> you wanna well. follow that in line? <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. What is H1 here? Oh it's in oh look at this, it's absolutely cheated. That is awful. Uh, okay. Okay, it's not so awful. It's just a, like a text mask, isn't there? I mean, yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and then we can we can do <laughs> move on. Okay, move, move on. Not not getting down the, the code pen route here. So then we should have probably something around like a, like italic here, right? Have you got an italic? Have only got an underline? It's a good question, but we can implement both, huh? Yeah. Can I, can I suggest something for the underline? This is what I love doing with my underlines at the moment. I love doing text underline offset um, and moving it down. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm back. Gesundheit. Um, Danke. <laughs> I, uh, I like doing text underline offset um, rather than adding a padding. So you know how like you can add a padding below a thing, uh, below a word, and then add a border below it? Text underline offset does it for you, and I love it. Make it like 0.5 rems. And then the text, oh, what is it? The um, text, um, the, 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 the width of it. Text decoration thickness. Fine. Cutting edge CSS. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Um, make make it 0 0.125 rems. Oh, you're gonna make it big. Okay, yeah, two, 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 right, why not? And then um the I think you've got to do text decoration underline if you're gonna add this span like this as well, because you have to you have to complete the the properties because it won't 
do it for you otherwise. I know it's brilliant, isn't it, Irish Beats? I only learned it recently and I use it everywhere and I love it because it looks really stylish. There we go. Although if you want to make a really thick line, you should do two rems rather than two M's. Well, I think you did. The, it didn't oh, take it didn't. the... Oh, it didn't take the text decoration thickness. There we there go. We go. <laughs> it's I beautiful. I think it's not, not, not enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's not thick enough. <laughs> okay, what do you great. think, works? It works. <laughs> So you can see how you can, you can just style using the document to write components. You can style whatever you want, however you want. It's not opinionated. You're free to do whatever you want. Overline, I didn't know that one. I didn't know that Here we one. go. What do you think about that? <laughs> Stefan Towers. <laughs> look at that. It's brilliant. Perfect. Okay. Oh, look, it's, look, it's even a shorthand these days. Oh, oh, look at that. Don't steal that tweet from me. <laughs> <laughs> I won't. I won't. You, you can have it. <laughs> <laughs> Overlaying. Right. Well, so we've got big Looks Shalma. like we're pretty strong in our design game here. Yeah. And especially with the uh, rotating React symbol, it's just everything you want out of a single page application. So what are we actually going to build today with our... Oh, no. Actually, before we do that, we've still got our embedded entry inline ID thing going on. So... I have something important to do first. Oh. <laughs> So important. I think one is overriding the other. I think that's the problem. Interesting. Here oh, we the go. There we go. It's, pe I, it's a beacon. Oh. <laughs> it's a real gem here. So, okay. <laughs> so, we've got this embedded entry inline ID thing. So, what are we going to do with that? We are going to now, we're using the marks from the contentful rich text types, but now we need to use the blocks um, to mm. do basically a little switch case on the different blocks that we have inside our links. Might drop. <laughs> so we do blocks. Entry, is that what you're saying? I believe so. And then that is a function, I guess. Huh? Ah, but I've just thought of something as well that um, I talk about in my article is that actually with with GraphQL, we need to do something a little bit different um, because um, the when you're using the JavaScript SDK and the REST API, all the links are uh, resolved for you as discussed before and therefore in line in the rich text field, you will have all of your full data links. But in GraphQL, it's a little bit different because it's returned to you as you ask for it and it's not resolved at the API level. So we need to do some fancy pantsy schmancy stuff. Why don't you get my um, get my blog post up, Stefan? Sure we do. Yeah. We can compare the two. So in this blog post, there are examples of how to render um, like a video embed and a code block and an, and an image asset, both with the REST API using the JavaScript SDK and with the GraphQL API. Um, and the most important thing I think with this blog post when I wrote it is that if you understand how things are uh, linked inside the REST API and then what the contentful SDKs do for you, then you are well equipped to understand how to do it yourself in GraphQL. And I guess GraphQL gives you more power. We're gonna say that, you know, a lot of people might say, what's best to use, REST or GraphQL? And it's just personal preference, uh, depending on what you need to do. There's not that much more work to do in GraphQL, uh, but it's really handy to understand how the links work and how the tree is resolved in order to work with GraphQL. That's quite a lengthy blog post, isn't it? Oh gosh, it's so long. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> I hope it's useful for some people. <laughs> so here we go. Here's the GraphQL example, I believe. Yes. So we have, um, so rather than render, so there's a render node option, um, render node node in the, the options object that we pass in. And we're still doing the switch on blocks.embeddedEntry. 
So we've got render mark and we've got render node. And mm. so the marks are for the, the literal marks that are inside in line with your text. And then the nodes are the, the blocks and the assets and the entries and things like that. So inside here, what we need to do is, I mean, when I was first working with rich text, um, it was Stefan who helped me to say, this is what I normally do. I normally create um, a, a map of the entries and the assets of ID to object, because what you get inside the, the JSON is a an ID to a reference inside a different node of links. And so what we can do now is we go through all of our links and we create a, a map in JavaScript and then the inline embedded entry will have the ID so that what we can do is look for the type of entry it is, which is in this case is an embedded inline entry, take the ID that's provided to us and then go and look it up from the asset block map. Um, and then we have all the data that we need because inside the links node, that's where all the data is. So we can do that now. So should we just copy this whole thing and adjust it? What do you think? Yeah, why not? I mean, this is what I would, clean. you know, this is. It's fine. That's what the blog post is for, isn't it? It's what it's for. All right. So let's grab that one. So here, rather than um, creating um, initially an options object, we're creating a function that returns an object because we need to do some calculations inside of it. Okay. So, can probably move that in here, huh? Yes. Because actually, I don't think that's in um, actually in there. We're only looking at the entries and not the actual marks. So we can probably move that above it. Here, other options. Yeah, other options. Well documented. Nice. <laughs> Sweet. So we've okay, still got we that. More other options, okay. Just in case. Um, and then we've got an embedded entry. So here we are. Um, so actually what we want to do, what do we what do we want to do with our inline entry, Stefan? Should we first of all just like console log it to say to show that we've got all the data in our entry? So we can get rid of the code block type and the video embed type. And actually what we want to look at is type name blog post, which is what we're querying. Or well, we could even yeah. render something out to the DOM, to be honest. Yeah. So should we just place a console log here and see what happens? Yeah, let's just have a look at what entry we get. Here we go. Got to return something, otherwise it will complain. And we have an asset. So that actually might already work here. Yeah. Yeah, just leave that. Let's see how much we broke. It's going to be seamless, flawless. But, um, OK, what's that? Options not defined. Oh, it's because now it's you've called it render options rather than options. Mm. Here we go. I think it's just render options. There we go. Gotcha. And you pass in, it takes the parameter of links because it needs to create those maps of the links. Here we go. Something like there? Lovely. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Not lovely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, interesting. Um, we don't have links.assets block because you're not querying links.assets block. You're querying links.assets something else. Oh, you are. Links. Entry. Yeah, we're not querying assets at all, huh? Here we go. Does it expect this? Yeah. For those of you who don't know, um, we're also talking about sys, and that's the internal contentful information that's held on an entry, and it has the ID and when it was last published and all sorts of things. Always recommend getting the sys ID when you're working in React components, because if you're going to render something in a loop, you need a unique key, and the ID is really nice to use. Yeah. It's these tiny patterns that one does it all the time, right? Yeah. 
Here we go. I think you have that an extra. Yeah. Yeah, that that doesn't look right. <laughs> There we well. go. Kind of. Right. So look, here we go. We've got schnitzel. We've got my image alt text. And we don't have an image URL because you're not even you're not asking for it in the query. Beauty of GraphQL. Let's see. URL. There we that go. will do. Um URL. Well, Nicely, there you go. Yeah, there it is. Look at that. I still think I, I will make a screenshot from the, of that. I think this is this <laughs> needs to be documented. <laughs> it's the best. It's, yeah, it's brilliant. <laughs> okay, so here, here, here we have the schnitzel. <laughs> here we have the schnitzel. <laughs> Okay, right. So we've got the. So let, let's go through to see what the the um, the asset block code did. So if we go uh, down to the render node. Um, what it did was oh, interesting. You've got the you've still got the blocks embedded entry thing on line eighty seven, um, and that's uh, gonna return schnitzel before the one in render node. Interestingly enough, there we go. Okay, so. Oh, okay. Maybe maybe it wasn't working. That's fine. We've got schnitzel everywhere. Too many schnitzels. Um, not, a, so, not a thing. Too many schnitzels. Oh, go to your console. And um, now we should have the entry in the console anyway. Here we go. There we go. Look at that. Everything. So we've got the entry data. And now we can render it however we want because we've created that asset block map. We've yoinked the data of the entry out of the links. Um, and we can reference it by ID in the asset block map and the entry block map, and we can just do whatever we want with it. So now we can just print out the title using your fancy schmancy front end skills. Let me just. You spelt it wrong. Aha. Uh -huh. So this is now locking out the right thing. And when I now just do saying. We're doing something like that. Is that right? Yeah. Entry title. With uh, squigglies around it. <laughs> With squigglies. So you call them squigglies as well? I uh, Not doubles. I call them, I, I call them curlies. Um, but somewhere I read that people call them um, vertical moustaches. And I think that's that's also kind of cute. <laughs> I don't like mustaches, so I can't use that word in general conversation. Mm, not good. <laughs> not good. All right. Sh should we look okay. for a fancy effect? Okay. Let's go. Give me some fancy words. Fancy effect number two. Okay. Give me some words. Schnitzel. Yes. No, <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> I, I'm looking for a, for a text effect. I'm not sure if schnitzel okay. will bring up something. Ne neon. Yes, only schnitzel. <laughs> I'm going to build one for you, Neon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see if we can copy something here. There we go. Clean neon text. Whoa. I mean, that's a lot. I don't know what you're expecting to be able to do that in line with all of that stuff. Uh, There's variables in there. Uh, Okay, then then it's up to us to do something nice. Okay, okay. Um, what we want is shoot CSS we, at me. Come on. We want um, color. Um, Rebecca purple. We want um, font style italic. We want um, uh, there's a there's a text. Okay, we want text shadow something. I don't know what the properties are for text shadow shadow. Um, <laughs> so that's where you come in. Me color. Um, 
sand, ochre. <laughs> How do I write that? Like that? O-C-H-R-E. I think that's a color. O-C-H-R-E. R-E. I think. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, uh, a font size. Let's do a clamp. <laughs> clamp. Like that? Yep. Do two rems, comma, four VW, ten rems. Well, that's, that's going to be something here. Yeah, it's going to be something. Code in the dark. You know, I want to do some code in the dark. Um, or you want Rebecca Purple for the color. Rebecca Purple. Didn't one Rebecca word. just work? I thought that. It I works. don't know. I don't know. Oh, today I learned. Let's All these things I'm words. learning. Shall we see what we just styled here? Let's see what we've got here. I really, I've always wanted to do a proper like code in the dark thing with with somebody to just full on do this. Where's it gone? No, oh, that didn't do anything. Nothing. <laughs> Are you styling the right thing? Why didn't so some of them didn't work? The color and stuff didn't work. Why? Hard refresh. Huh. It shouldn't, Hard refresh. It shouldn't, be a, shouldn't be a thing, though, should it? Oh, well. That is disappointing. That is disappointing. Let's fix the cut. It is Rebecca Purple. Yeah, there you go. Maybe that's why Purple Hacks and Irish Beats were right. <laughs> Rebecca Purple. And, and I, I probably got the text shadow completely wrong. So five pixels, five pixels. Oh, here we are. Now we're talking. Oh, look at that blur. Okay, ochre's not a color. Uh, do sand. Saddle brown will do. <laughs> Sandy brown. <laughs> there we go. That's what we want. I know you like the shadows in your life. But with that doesn't really think so. But is that a thing? No. no. Everything is better with the shadow. I mean, it's never. This is peak peak. Oh my! I don't think we're far away from adding a baby. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> it's all about the babies. <laughs> okay. So so what did we achieve here? We achieved, um, so what we've got, we've got a rich text field that gives us back pure JSON. And what we've done, we've used um, document to React components from the Contentful Rich Text uh, React Renderer and the Contentful Rich Types blocks and marks from that. And what we're doing is we are creating our own function to basically loop through all the different nodes, check it by type, and do some stuff, whatever we want. And the power is ours. It's just JSON, and we can do whatever we want. We can do inline styles. We can do styled components. We can use anything we want. And so now, what we want to do, Stefan, we want to we want to build something, don't we? Like something really cool. Yeah. So I what what I actually wanted to build is something like Wikipedia does. So when you go to Wikipedia, for example, and you look for our favorite word here today, Schnitzel. what you can do, you can hover on any little thing, and it shows a tooltip. And this is basically, this is actually a very, very nice use case for inline references in rich text because it allows you or it gives you all the data of the things that you just connected. And now we're really starting freestyle mode here. We are, <laughs> so because I don't know, I don't know how to actually do this. Um, I haven't planned it out in my head yet. So I'm wondering, first of all, how, what we need to do is how do we assign the linked entry to an actual bit of text when we hover over it? Because it's all well and good having, so if you go back to the Contentful web app, mm -hmm. and we have a look at the rich text field. So for example, if I want um, that blog post meta information to hover, um, oh, I, I know what to do, I know what to do. So what we could do is we could take that inline entry, Let, we need to request some more stuff in the query. I think we need to request the featured image, um, and maybe an excerpt or a blurb or something and the title and, and the URL on the slug and everything like that to be able to link to it. So let's get the hero image. Let's, 
yeah, we need we need all sorts. We need the URL and we need um, a description for alt text and the size. Visibility first. Yeah. Uh, and that will be height an object, and I guess. width. Yes, it is. Oh, oh. oh is it not? I think we have we just request height and width actually. Uh, size is probably file size, huh? Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Okay, so we've got that in our entry suite. And what we're probably going to need to do is so we've got the we need the slug to be able to direct people to it. Unless now we don't need that. We just want to hover over some stuff, don't we? Okay. I think that's all we need. Get um right. is there a is there a description of the blog post or an excerpt or a blurb or something short? Description. Let's get that. Cool. Right. And then I think what we want to do is once we've got that image got that in our query, all we need to do is render the title of the blog post in line with the text, which we know we can do, and then um, add some tooltip functionality on top of that, the part that takes all of the rest of the data from that embedded entry. That's good. That? Should we should we check what Swallow proposed there first? Oh, yes, we definitely should. Uh, I'm not sure how, if I can but, copy that. Uh, uh, I, can, I can copy. Oh, you haven't got Slack open, have you? I'll just dictate no. it to you. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> Why not? Wait, wait, where, where is our inline style? Here, text shadow. Okay, okay text I'm shadow. 1.5 pixels. Half pixels already. <laughs> 1.5 pixels. Zero. And then what color do we want? Did we want that sandy brown? Sandy, sandy brown. And then comma, minus 1.5 pixels, minus 1.5 pixels, zero, same color, comma. That's better be worth it. <laughs> minus 1.5 pixels. <laughs> Minus 1.5 pixels, zero color, uh, yeah. sandy brown. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I've lost where I am now. Uh, minus 1.5 pixels, 1.5 pixels, zero color, comma, 1.5 1. 1. pixels. Minus 1.5 pixels, zero color. Hello, Yusuf from YouTube. Got some YouTube people on there. Right, let's, this better be worth it, Swallow. Oh, not bad, not bad. Yeah, not, not bad. bad. <laughs> no, no, that was fun. Okay, cool. So we've got the title that we're returning the title. Um, and you found them. Um, a, okay. we're, we're, we're not here for good looking stuff. <laughs> okay, um, so you found um, a fancy little tooltip library earlier, didn't you, uh, to be able to hover over easily in React? Yeah, just um, Google React tooltip. So let's see, what do we got? We can do React tooltip, and then I saw that it has an HTML option. And oh. I think with this, we can basically do something on Hover. Do whatever we want with all of our data. Should we give it a spin? Let's give it a spin. Ship it, <laughs> says it. Irish Beats. All right. Here we go, yarn start. How do we use this? <laughs> it looks very bad. <laughs> it looks, looks very bad. Accessibility first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Purple and sandy brown. OK. <laughs> uh, I'm confused for a moment. So we're, we're going to the React Tooltip library. We're going to import it. There we go. And then 
How do we Put use it? Put it in a marquee. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we use we put data HTML on uh, we call it we call it data tip. Should we look at an example first? Yeah. Some more codes. Hmm. No example. Data tip. So that's. Why is my microphone suddenly really loud? Um, that's, um, so I think you would put data tip on the div around uh, what we want to show, and then we would use data HTML to pass in some HTML potentially. But Salma, we are not rendering the inline entry yet, do we? Yeah. We've got the entry title on line 112. What we would do is we'd add the tooltip to that. Ah, but I thought that we are rendering type embedded entry inline ID <laughs> 3K9B0. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Why is that? Oh, we're doing the block. We're not yeah. doing, we're do, we, we're doing the block. We're not doing the inline one, right? Let's go to do the inline one. Yeah. All right, let's do um, something like that, huh? Inline embedded entry, there we go. Yes, sorry about that, yes. Yeah, no, I missed it myself. And then we can probably reuse some stuff, huh? Yeah, we can, okay. definitely. And um, should we log it? Yeah, let's just log it. Let's just check we've got it. Swallow says, are we doing it 90s style? Always doing it 90s style. Love a bit of 90s style. Inline is not defined. You have to import it from the types. No, it is not defined. And inline. What? Hmm. Is it in lines? Yeah, I think you're, wait, let's see the auto completion. Let's see if it tells them. Here we go. Uh, that would make it's, sense because it's blocks. It's blocks. Yeah, absolutely. Here we, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> and I think our little thing here disappeared. Yes, because we're not doing anything with it anymore. And if you go into the console, you'll see that entry. Yeah. We have some errors here. I think this is leftover, huh? Yeah. Okay. Entry is undefined. Are Do we, we fetch ask, it? Are we asking for the ID? Okay. Time for the playground again, huh? Entries in line. We're not getting the blog. We need to get the blog post ID, I think. I think that's where the IDs come in because it's node ID, node.data.target.sys ID. Should we log this one up and see if this is correct? Okay, we have the ID. Uh huh. And we can also probably log out the entry block map. Huh. We're not fetching everything. Did I copy and paste everything over? Maybe not. Things, entries, inline, blocks. Is... All right, let's see. Did I do it again? Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. Okay, we have we have something wrong here. Huh. What I've normally done in the the I think do you need type name? 
because I've always done like a switch on the type name inside of those things. Maybe you, maybe you shouldn't need that though, I don't think. Let's check what we get here, huh? So we have links inline 3k something 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 and with block okay so we have three references in the response so it looks like it looks like you do need that type name thing to to switch between them because at the moment everything is just in in line but you need like maybe i'm i don't know if i'm talking nonsense yeah i think it's here Because from the from the blog post, we're only iterating over the block. block. Yes. Bit inline. Inline. Uh, yeah. Yes. And with that, um. We touched the blog, the logging. Let's wait. Here we go. Entry. Here we go. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay. Nice. So we have everything we need to construct the HTML to put into the tooltip thing to show it on hover of the title. Nice. So should we render a span first? What do you think? Let's render render the, the span with the, with the title. Title, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's worth pointing out. Usually, you would do what Salma just said: is that you would do something like entry type name here, and then you would conditionally render depending yeah, on. Yeah, because you'd normally have different different things. Different things, yeah. yeah. For for our case, we can <laughs> just go YOLO as, as we do here. <laughs> And then we can do, so to lock the title, we can do entry title, right? So that should bring it as back. With sometimes. squigglies. Ah. <laughs> ah. Here we go. OK. So now we have the entry title from a reference. Beautiful. And now. Add data tip your placeholder to your element. So it's a placeholder first. Just... Data tip. Hello world. And place React tooltip somewhere. On a bet if that works. How many times do you need that per per instance of the tooltip or just anywhere? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> look oh, at this. Look at that. Wonderful. That nice? It's a shame it's not cursor pointer by default. Yeah. Should we just I mean, maybe it, it should. Bit? Maybe it shouldn't be pointer because it's not a link, is it? So maybe that's actually more accurate. This is a philo philosophical question, actually. Um, mm. I think there are two camps of but buttons by default in in CSS default sheets also don't have. Yeah, I know. Counter. I know. It is a, it is a little tricky there. It's always been my default thing to add a add a pointer whenever you're going to do something with something. It feels more natural to me too, but I don't know. So should we just style that a little bit, and then I think we can call it day already. Yeah, let's uh, let's get some HTML. So let's put some HTML. Let's see how we do that. So let's see. Data HTML equals true. Okay. Um, where are we? We are here. Was it a string or was it a real bool? It's a bool. Data HTML equals true. I haven't written data attributes in so long. Yeah. Now, cool. Can we not do this just? Maybe. Yeah. 
Yes. It is kind of, it is a, it's kind of cool, I have to say. That is pretty cool. That's pretty so cool. Should we, should we bring in the image and then? Yes, let's do that. Mm. Then we can preview all the schnitzels all the time. Nice. So let's do this. Um. Irish Beats just noticed your VS Code pet. It is wonderful, isn't it? I don't like dogs. Isn't that the cat right now? Oh, is that the cat? I still don't like yeah. cats. I don't like, I, you <laughs> I don't like anybody cat. or anything. You I have, have a cat. Cats. I have two cats and they, they annoy me every single day in my life. When my cat uh, jumps onto my windowsill, it makes the same sound over and over again. And I am ready to throw that cat out the window. Just saying. I, I, I hear some love here. <laughs> I used to love my cats. I used to love my cats. But then when I brought my son home, like three and a half years ago, all of a sudden my cats were not my babies anymore. And that's what happened. <laughs> oh. <laughs> replaced. Got replaced by a human. Yes. Yes. Put the um put the out out on the uh, image just for, for fun. Yeah, I'm still I'm still struggling a little bit Ex with Oh yes, you gotta put your squigglies after your you gotta put the squigglies first before the back ticks. Mm -hmm. I I mess that up all the time as well. <laughs> that would be um Entry dot hero image dot description. Description. Here we go. Here we go. You can put the height and width on it if you want as well, but that might be too big right now for uh, for the the thingy that we've got. Maybe you put a, a div around it and just make a width of it, and then we're gonna have to because we're gonna have to style it with some kind of CSS, aren't we? To yeah, no, I'm putting not putting inline size. <laughs> what what up? <laughs> Code quality first. Code quality first. Inline styles, random background colors, everything. I can't believe I heard, really a, put the I heard a nice acronym. <laughs> I read that yesterday. So so there's dry and there's wet, right? Wet means write everything twice. And oh, <laughs> I, never, I haven't heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's actually beautiful. <laughs> that's brilliant. Genius. Genius. Um, So like that. Is it working? Hey, Nils is here. Your friend hey, Nils. Nils is here. We we are writing wet wet code. Very wet <laughs> code. So should we check? Yes. Will that style work on that image tag? I guess it's just. Oh look at that! Here we go. Brilliant. Brilliant. There we go. And there's we've rewritten Wikipedia. With rich text, we've we've just re-implemented this little effect. We could now spend a little bit of time um, spending uh, styling it, but I think pretty much we have the data here. Should we we could add at least some text. Huh? What do you think? Yeah, let's add some text. Yeah, we've got we're all ready. of that data from GraphQL. We've got the title and the description. So we could now. Still not fluent with the keyword. I have to look uh, look all the time where I'm doing things. Oh no, entry description. Yeah. Here we go. And with that, look at that. Yeah. Here we go. You couldn't do that with a standard WYSIWYG editor thing, could you? I could what? You couldn't do that so fluently with a standard WYSIWYG response of HTML. Like, how would you even do that? How would you even construct that in a CMS to return something that you could do that with? It'd be, it'd be you'd have to do another query to get something else um, based on something else that's hidden in the DOM or something. I do think that is, yeah, I agree. I think that's actually, will you implement that on your site? I think it's quite nice to have this preview for next yes. things. 
I will. I think it's quite cool. The, the issue though with some of the links, uh, so I generally in my blog posts don't reference other blog posts. So a lot of all of my links in my blog posts are external links. So you could do some prefetching on that. But also I could actually create an inline entry of an external link with metadata and stuff, couldn't I? Oh, that's a lot of work though. <laughs> it is a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> it is a lot of work. Um, I haven't got a use case for it actually, because everything at the moment is so internal, everything is external. Um, mm. But I, I want to build I want to build something. But then the, there is the issue, though, of when you're on mobile and if you're designing mobile first stuff, that won't work. So, you know, I'm always thinking about accessibility and stuff. So you'd have to provide, if, if that's really like, um, I wonder what Wikipedia do actually on mobile. I'm going to have a look. If that's really like core functionality, then uh, there should be a way to, uh, oh, you can look at it. Yeah, I guess they won't do anything, will they? No, I don't think where well, you don't no. have pointer events first. Yeah, of all. exactly. Hello, hello, friend. Oh, hi, friend. <laughs> I've never seen that before. Um, oh. Cool. Should we do a sum up and then maybe tell what we learned? What do you think? Yeah, let's do a sum up. What have you? What have? What have? What have you learned today, Stefan? Well, I learned that Rebecca Purple is Rebecca Purple and not Rebecca. Uh huh. That was my thing. And what else did we do? We did this beautiful thing here. Um, thanks, Swallow, I think it was. <laughs> yeah. And we learned a lot of things about the text iteration stuff. I, I think this is good stuff. That's a beautiful one. I actually learned that um, if you do an async function followed by a then inside use effect, you don't need to do something, um, you don't need to do a little workaround for that, which is nice. Oh, because it? I've come across that before. Yeah, it was. There it is, yeah. So if you do a then rather than an await, so if you tried to await fetch blog post then, if without the then word, if you tried to do a wait fetch blog post there, then it wouldn't have worked. You have to wrap it in something that calls it. But if you use a then, then it works. So I'm going to take that. Uh, you wrote this year, right? Yes, it did. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That is... Silly. Cool. Um, uh, Mohamed also still has a question. Hi, can we change content full rich text to CK editor? Um, I don't know what CK editor is. The answer is probably no. <laughs> because we're getting that's an H that's that delivers you HTML. It doesn't deliver you JSON. And the power of the rich text field is that it gives you JSON. You can do whatever you want with it. You can show it on billboards, you can show it on your Apple Watch, you can show it on your fridge without having to deal with HTML. Because it potentially, so you could be delivering your content to places that don't deal with HTML in the standard way that HTML works. You could be delivering it to a React Native app that doesn't do HTML. You could be delivering it to something that uses Swift or um, an Android app that doesn't do your standard HTML. And that's what's great about Contentful because it doesn't deliver you HTML in your rich text. It delivers you something that you can deal with anywhere as long as you've got uh, capabilities to, to manipulate JSON. That's what's so nice. I love it. I love it. There yeah. you go. In case, Mohamed, you want to use CK Editor, you could put it into the framework, into Contentful <laughs> using the app framework, though. You could. Imagine. Okay. I wonder if someone's done that before. Because everything in Contentful can, re be, can be replaced by your own custom code. And if you want to go that route, I prefer the rich text one, um, but you could potentially do that. What you also could do as a developer, if you wanted your, you could actually, make an app that uses the rich text field that delivers the rich text content in the HTML that you want in the front end, technically, without having to do any code. So that would take like all of the logic out of your code and put it into a Contentful app. It could be a yeah. thing. <laughs> I don't know why you would do that, but <laughs> you could. Be careful with the advice, Salma. <laughs> I mean, you, you could, but you shouldn't. <laughs> Cool, but I think overall um, we implemented, um, we wrote some GraphQL queries, we um, implemented rich text fields, everything. We should be plug the your article again. Um, oh yes, so you can do exclamation mark rich text 
text. There you go. Check that out. There's also so links are... to another blog post in that that tells you all about actually links in general. Carry um, on. Yeah, and we wrote this uh, beautiful React app. I don't think it's worth to push that to GitHub, to be honest. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> because every everything is also included in the blog post, but I think we made it uh, through fairly smoothly. What do you think? Good job, good job, team. I, do you know what? I've really enjoyed not coding this contentful stream, to be honest. It's felt really relaxed, and it's, it's been really nice to like, not be stressed out about typing on stream. So thanks for typing. No problem. And... As we're in Europe, we we'll probably call it a day. But if you want to, you can also go, always go to contentful.com slash developers. And Salman, and myself, and all the others are hanging out in our Slack chat. If you have questions or feedback, we're happy to answer them. Yeah, should come we press say the hi. button? Let's press the button. Oh, no, should we raid someone? Oh, yeah, you, you're the raider. I'm, I'm the Twitch noob. Let's, OK, let me, oh, I'm, I need to, can I do it from here? Can I do it from here in Twitch? I might need to actually go to a different browser. Hang on, let's say, we need to wait so, someone. I think, <laughs> go on. So for the people that are watching on Twitch, I'm the absolute Twitch noob. And I only learned what a raid is a few months ago. And I'm still not fluent Twitch. I learned how to whisper like a month ago. We'll get you there. Oh, I need to log into a different. Ah. This is this is how this is why it's hard without NG here, because uh, now I need to log out of there. I need to log in to Twitch, but I, that means I need to. I should have prepared. That means I need to um, log in to <laughs> to get a code, and it might not might not work. But we can Take do it. Time. We can hang out. I, we can hang out. I can show something. Do your thing. I will just show some random contentful stuff in the meantime. For the people watching, have you seen this little red bubble here? I'm actually very excited oh. about that because now you see changelog entries right in the UI and you see beautiful stuff like new API releases, new notifications, and all that kind of things. So I think this is great. And if you want to keep track with other stuff, you can also go to contentful.com slash developers. And we have this little sign up thing here. Uh, I am. Uh, writing the developer newsletter, newsletter once a month. So if you want to keep track of what's going on with live streaming, tutorials, um, new libraries, community activities, um, the newsletter and is the way to go and check out the red bubble. Are you ready, Salma? I'm ready. We're going to raid that noob, uh, one of my long-term streaming community friends. Uh, noob currently is uh, building... Um, something with Angular and TypeScript and Electron. And he's got some very exciting projects. And a new addition to Noobstream is that he's got a virtual face thing. And it's really fun. He's got hand tracking and everything. So it's even fun just to look at that for um, for, for novelty. So I'm going to press the button and we're going to raid um, that noob very soon. Let me just, oh, where's the button gone? Hang on. There we go. And. Um, this has been fun, Stefan. Thanks for hanging out with me and, and building something cool and fun. Well, I think we built something beautiful. And with this, everybody has a great day. See you soon. Bye. Cheers. Oh, I have to press the button now. No, no do I, I pressed it. That's all right. It's all good. <laughs> uh, although we, you need to, we need to stop the end broadcast. Okay, I press end broadcast now. And let's see if people okay. hear us still. Okay. <laughs>